Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Larissus Road project is nearing successful completion. New dialysis machines have been installed at the St. Jude's Hospital. A stalwart in statistical development retires as St. Lucia's Director of Statistics. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle are quail. The Larissus Road project is fast nearing successful completion, paving the way for new opportunities in the south of the island. The project not only provides for a better travel experience, but is a critical link in the government's development plans for Vieux and surrounding communities. Here's Shannon Laborn. The new Larissus Road is approximately 95% complete, with current paving of the finished surface as part of the final phase. This road project has already begun to positively transform the VF4 landscape and will be the new link to the multi-million dollar world-class Hiranora International Airport Terminal, soon to be constructed. Technical experts from the Department of Infrastructure were on site recently for a first-hand update and assessment of progress. Permanent Secretary Mr. Ivor Daniel says, from all indications, the newly completed paved surface, as well as other aspects of construction, appears to be up to standard. We indicated that we were removing and improving the road safety at the junction near the bridge and that this road would now lead directly into the new terminal. There will be at this current location a possible a roundabout based on the design that would lead into the new terminal. So I'm pretty much excited about it. The prospect is good. I'm quite happy that we've now begun to, to um, in putting on the asphalt. Um, the black tie is on and I'm all excited about it and I can see some progress. The Larissus Road reconstruction project consisted construction of 1.6 kilometers of road, which also included site clearance, general excavation, dual carriage reconstruction, construction of drainage systems and utility transfer. Project supervisor Mr. Peter Seepal says at all stages, various quality control measures were undertaken to ensure the project achieved the approved requirements. He says there are numerous road safety measures incorporated in the final design. So far we have done all the earthworks that is in place. We have completed the base and the sub-base. And now if you can see behind me, we have placing of the first layer of asphalt. And it's going to be a two-layer operation. We are completing the first layer. Then the second layer is going to be placed, which is going to give a very good driving surface. It is indeed a long stretch and we have some very good safety features that are going to be incorporated in the road project. Of course, we're going to have all our road signs, our warning signs are going to be in place, all the indicators and the necessary road furniture, you will find that in place. Proper road marking is going to be placed on the road surface as well. Also, what we have tried to ensure is we, that we have a mostly level road track that is going to allow for good line of sight ahead of you so that you can see clearly any oncoming traffic. Also, the curves along the road, these are very smooth curves, so it would be fairly easy to navigate those curves and incidents of vehicles running off the road around tight corners, these would be reduced. The project is being executed by C.O. Williams Construction St. Lucia Limited, which has 32 years of construction experience here in St. Lucia. Founder and CEO Sir Charles Williams says he's pleased that most of the construction supplies and workforce for this project was supplied by St. Lucia. I'm very, very pleased with the asphalt that's been put down, the quality, and I'm looking forward. I still come every week. I'm looking forward every week to see more and more. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy applauds residents and motorists for their continued patience and support during the execution of this project, which paves the way for the injection of new life and investment in the South. It is scheduled for completion within four weeks. From the Communications Unit, this is Shannon the Bond. The Department of Health and Wellness is continuing its efforts to provide quality health services to St. Lucians suffering from kidney-related complications. Patients in the south of the island now have more ready access with the installation of new dialysis machines at the St. Jude's Hospital. Dialysis services offered to renal patients in the south of the island is expected to be enhanced as the St. Jude Hospital recently installed free new state-of-the-art dialysis machines. Chairman of the St. Jude Hospital Board, Wayne Haru, says he is very pleased that the dialysis machines will assist the hospital in facilitating kidney patients amid the increasing numbers. We have um, 
increase the number of dialysis machines at St. Jude's Hospital. So right now we have nine machines. We have uh, installed three new machines, two in the dialysis unit, an extra two in the dialysis unit, and one in the ICU, the intensive care unit. And as a result, we are able now to expand to the public the number of persons would be receiving dialysis treatment at St. Jude's Hospital. At present, we provide treatment six days a week from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. for our sessions per patient. Haro also called on St. Lucians to make lifestyle changes as to avoid being diagnosed with chronic kidney disease and requiring dialysis. Primarily, there must be a public relations exercise where St. Lucians understand the need to avoid seeking dialysis treatment and start looking after their own care. Try to engage in lifestyles where they can avoid the need for dialysis in the future. Currently, the St. Jude Hospital has a total of nine dialysis machines available to the public. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The Department of Sustainable Development, through the increased St. Lucia's capacity to monitor multilateral environmental agreements, implementation and sustainable development projects, continues to build the competence of the public and private sector to facilitate the coordination of environmental information to ensure national indicator-based reporting in a coherent and more efficient manner. A training workshop recently concluded which sought to further greater institutional, systematic and individual level understanding of environmental issues among non-governmental stakeholders. The three-week training workshop sought to enhance St. Lucia's ability to meet reporting requirements on its obligations for multilateral environmental engagements. The training sessions covered geographic environmental indicators, conducting vulnerability and adaptation assessments, among other areas. The training also sought to further greater institutional, systematic and individual level understanding of environmental issues among non-governmental stakeholders. As individual agencies, the information and training provided in these sessions have direct impact and can put into practical use in your workplace and facilitate further skills training of your colleagues. I applaud the trainers and their skill sets that facilitated you returning day after day, but especially commend you all for your dedication and time invested over the past weeks. Sometimes the process of learning can get overwhelming as there is such as there is so much to learn and not even and not enough time to devote to really de delving into it. However, I believe that the newly acquired skills from these work from this workshop we are adequate to enable you to successfully capture and manage data to improve St. Lucia's ability to monitor reports on progress made. Facilitating the training workshop was Sheikh Kadir of Canbean Associates Incorporated. Environmental indicators, social indicators, economic indicators are all very related. These workshops have been very challenging and by no means we can say that you be, you know, you, you would have become an expert in the particular area. However, one of the good things about this workshop, we did the last workshop about uh, two years ago, is that there will be follow-up on the participants to see how you put what you learn in practice and, importantly, to grow. The support of agencies, including the Global Environmental Fund and UNEP, has facilitated the enhancement of the local capacity to generate, access, and use information for policy development, planning, monitoring, and evaluating of environmental impacts and trends. The Peace Corps Eastern Caribbean has rolled out its primary literacy program in conjunction with the Ministry of Education. The program focuses on classroom support for primary school teachers and students using the Eastern Caribbean standard primary curriculum and additional resources. More from Anicia Antoine. The U.S. Peace Corps in the Eastern Caribbean, in partnership with the Ministry of Education, the OECS and the USAID, are hosting a primary literacy workshop. 
The three-day workshop will include informative sessions, exposés and insightful discussions between the counterpart teachers and Peace Corps volunteers working to improve literacy education in the Caribbean. Now in its sixth year of collaboration with the OECS, the U.S. Peace Corps has conducted baseline assessments on 7,239 students in grades 1 to 3. Leonette Japier is the regional training manager for the Peace Corps Eastern Caribbean. The workshop is intended to have the volunteers and their counterparts hone their primary English literacy skills to be able to um, respond to the needs of children in grades 1 to 3 in infant and primary schools. And um, our aim through this workshop is to ensure that the participants live with a wealth of knowledge, um, information, strategies, best practices that they can employ with at the schools to ensure that the students are able to make an improvement in their literacy skills. Lisa Sajusin Terence, reading specialist attached to the OECS Education Management Development Unit, expressed her gratitude towards the Peace Corps and volunteers for their collaboration in ensuring students receive the best quality of education. Better literacy instruction is the key to improving children's lives from now and into their adulthood. We at the OECS Commission share the belief that every learner can succeed, and that's actually our vision. Every learner can succeed. And um, we know that this can also be attained through very sound, evidence-based literacy programs. The OECS feels very confident that we are creating synergies through such experiences, and that education in the region is addressed in a collaborative manner with partners like Peace Corps. The workshop commenced on Tuesday, March 27th and will culminate on Thursday, March 29th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. St. Lucian statistician Edwin St. Catherine, who is considered a stalwart in statistical development in the region, is now retired from the public service as director of statistics. St. Catherine reflected on his robust tenure in the field with the OECS Commission. He believes that there needs to be more advocacy for statistics in the region, which includes more deployment of available tools. Deploying the use of, of blogs for analysis of our data, deploying the use of Facebook and Twitter on a more regular and, and scheduled basis when we have major releases, like for example, releases on inflation, on unemployment, on the GDP, um, maybe highlighting specific points um, that are interesting that people should remember. When, when there is any policy discourse, they will be better informed about, you know, well, what is happening, okay? And uh, generally, in terms of the, the structure of the statistical system, to have much more regular um, publication of information. One of his greatest achievements during his tenure was the delivery of greater methodologies for conducting the census. So I try to cut it. I think um, in 2001, through the use of scanning technology, right? we cut that down to about a year and a half. By 2010, we cut that down to about seven months. St. Lucia delivers the census results within seven months of completion of the census. St. Catherine assumed the role of Director of Statistics in 1994 and has worked extensively on the development and conduct of labor force surveys in Caribbean countries. He is a registered expert with the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, on inflation, price index measurements, and the development of national consumption expenditure baskets. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. Climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros l'eau et l'air a pris l'eau.
a détruit les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer a été plus chaud, il a trouvé une place qui s'est pressée dans la gravité. La mer a aussi changé de manière de se pressée à quitter d'un côté et aller à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué à un petit gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça, nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre de venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est la mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous avons tout au niveau de la terre, car le gaz, l'huile et le chèvre. Et ça, quand on est cause de la terre, on a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire actuellement même, c'est pour adapter. Faites tout ça, nous avons fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. La tête nous pour abattre des manches en temps cyclone et godelot. Construire un canal pour de l'eau couille bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui le canal là par les ordres. Faites tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps de changement climat. Ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger le corps et tout notre set les siens. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien of your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on NTN Nightly News. The talent of St. Lucia's Special Olympians is improving annually, and that realization continues to inspire technical officials who work constantly with potential athletes to compete at World Special Olympics. This comes after another successful outing for St. Lucia at the recently concluded World Special Olympics in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Members of St. Lucia's team got an official welcome home last Saturday and National Director Special Olympics St. Lucia Junior Emmanuel noted that the team was outstanding in the events in which they participated. They've got an opportunity to see how the different side of the world live. And because in St. Lucia we are free and, and um, to do the things we want, walk around how we want. But then they got a greater opportunity to learn um, what, how to respect rules and the culture while in, at the same time embracing differences. So it was a great opportunity for them. They performed extremely well under, under circumstances. They took a little adjustment. Um, they were able to win gold in the football. Um, we got a silver in um, track and field by Joshua Henry. We got a gold in bocce and three bronze medals. So in truth and in fact, our athletes performed extremely, extremely well. Meanwhile, Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, made a special presentation to a sitting of Parliament on Tuesday. Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia's participation at the Special Olympics heralded the essence of pride, joy, respect, love, appreciation, and recognition of those athletes with incapacities. Mr. Speaker, the Special Olympics mission was carved out of the critical need to provide year-round sports training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic type sports for children and adults with disabilities. This provides them continuing opportunities to develop physical fitness, to demonstrate courage and experience joy and participate in a sharing environment. Mr. Speaker, we know and believe strongly that our athletes who participated in these games are brilliant. They are talented, they are gifted, they are skilled, and indeed remarkable. We recognize as a sports-focused and committed government that they have a vital contribution to make in our society. This, in essence, Mr. Speaker, helps them contribute meaningfully as able-bodied citizens we value to earn a respected place in our society. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports continued its second round consultation and meetings Tuesday with leaders from the Castries and Roseau areas to review key recommendations made throughout the Ministry's initial round of consultations in late 2018. Eight groups were represented at the dialogue, including the SAB Management Committee, South Castries Youth and Sports Council, 
Rose Hill Valley Youth and Sports Council, Castries Central Youth and Sports Council, and Youth Power Group. The engagement provided an opportunity to ensure alignment in the understanding of key needs of these groups from the ministry, while also sharing feedback from the wider group of national stakeholders. Before leaving, a reminder that Youth Expose, set for April 5th at Constitution Park, will also be the formal launch to Youth Month. Activities from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., including a youth march, exhibition, live demonstrations, talent show, and concert. Come out and lend support to the nation's youth. That's your update today from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayor. Monsieur Ta Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, département qui n'est pas responsable pour l'information au gouvernement cette ci à ce GIS, à ce même télévision nationale PA NTN, qu'a posé au nouvel accueil, posé au Primus Hutchinson. Chez mes neuf, en commun la rue chez vieux fort, à peu près quatre vingt quinze pour ça fini. Ça veut dire construction chez mes salas, puis j'ai presque arrivé à boutli. Ça qui a fait présentement, c'est travail pour pitch dernier morceau en finissement pour chez mes salas. Selon le rapport qui sort du ministère des Constructions et des Travaux, le projet chez Mansala a commencé à transformer bien comme il faut l'apparence ville vieux fort avec le morceau chez Mansala qui a été branché et puis le grand aéroport international Nef Hiwanora qui a été trouvé construit tout de suite. Les officiers techniques du ministère ont visité le projet récemment pour faire un assessment de degrés pour le degré qui a fait excellent secrétaire permanent, M. Ayrva Daniel. Tout le monde pense que le travail a bien avancé et qu'il y a un haut degré tout bonnement et que ça a bien favorable. Le projet pour la construction de chemin de la ressource consistait de 1,6 km de chemin qui a embrassé le travail pour nettoyer le projet, le côté qui a brisé le fouillé, le côté qui a apporté des façades de chemin pour faciliter l'auto, la construction du système canal et pour placer le service utilité sortir vieux chemin là pour le chemin nouveau. Chef projet chez Mesala, M. Peter Sipal, déclare que y a pris toute précaution qui était nécessaire pour faire assurer que la tenue bon contrôle des degrés de qualité qui était nécessaire pour assurer que le projet de Mesala a été fait sans essor. Il a ajouté qu'il y a plusieurs arrangements que j'ai en place pour assurer une bonne protection à ce moment de chez Mesala. Le travail à ce chez Mesala a fait par la compagnie Sio Williams, qui a eu trois délais d'expérience qui a construit chez moi à cette place. Go Greg Company, Sir Charles Williams, dit qu'il était plein qui a majorité d'équipement et qui travaillait pour le projet de sortir de cette place même. Le ministère a applaudi les résidents et les chauffeurs auto la richesse pour patience et les projets de votre travail et de l'opération sur le projet de la Comme ça a ouvert l'occasion pour bâtir la vie nouveau et investissement en façade sud. C'est le travail ça la supposé bout en quatre semaines. Culture c'est le a trouvé une attention nouveau pour augmenter et cultiver continuation c'est ce en la vie peuple là. Pour raison ça la fondation pour développement culturel à c'est le ça c'est CDF qui a tenu deux ou trois sessions des ateliers pour essayer de ressusciter ces diverses cultures qui en bas menace pour disparaître. À présent, le directeur général pour l'organisation UNESCO, Mme Marcia Symphorian, dit que l'UNESCO est une agence qui a coopéré et a coopéré avec le projet CDF pour faire ça en réalité. Selon Symphorian, attention, c'est principalement à ce culte qui est tangible, en disant ça qui est tangible. Ça veut dire 
ça nous connaît nation qui a boissé, qui vivant, ça veut dire au passage, bien manger, et bien placer, qu'on a une table de l'honneur, mais on s'est embrassé l'esprit, par exemple, musique, divers jeux folkloriques, danser, à parmi l'autre. Ça veut dire pour nous ça documenté qu'il y a, pour nous ça, tout le monde a dit, nous n'y qu'il y a, nous n'y qu'il y a, mais nous pas connaître qu'il y a. Ce que ça nous voulait faire, c'est documenté, pour nous ça, là, on s'est gardé, on s'est mis, c'est ça, mais c'est ça, là, on parlait de masquerade, mais c'est ça, là, on parlait de, de Koutoumbas, mais c'est ça. So, pour ce processus là pour documenter c'est 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 ça c'est activité culturelle ça là c'est ça nous qu'a um, CDF assistance que ça fait directeur général UNESCO a dit aussi il a décidé pour assister CDF après il a reçu un proposal à uh, relation des affaires ça là alors UNESCO a tué assistance finance pour porter les professionnels ensemble qui n'ont pas l'âge là pour ça enregistrer ces formations ça là ça veut dire pour nous ça documenté qu'il y a. Pour nous ça, tout le monde a dit, nous n'y qu'il y a, nous n'y qu'il y a, mais nous ne connaissons pas qu'il y a. Ce que nous voulons faire, c'est documenté. Pour nous ça, là, on s'est gardé, on s'est mis, c'est ça, mais c'est ça. Là, on parlait de masquerade, mais c'est ça. Là, on parlait de coutumbas, mais c'est ça. So, pour ce processus là, pour documenter ce qu'il y a, c'est ça, c'est activité culturelle, ça là. C'est ça, nous avons fait un CDF, assistance pour ça. En parlant de ça, Officier CDF qui va comme ça pour publier produits et publicité organisation, M. Jimmy Clavier déclaré que l'organisation CDF est très appréciable de l'assistance UNESCO et très plaît aussi que le gouvernement s'est ici car supporter CDF a dans une façon très significative. Ça nous vient um, à pousser à c'est un pays, un um, gouvernement, un pays, un pays, à nous assis un document en convention um, depuis 2007 à sous protéger, mais nous avons protégé et nous um, nous avons um, fait assurer la, la transmission um, qu'il dit nous from grand, ce grand monde pour ces jeunes nous aime that um, nous pas à faire ça assez dans le pays. C'est pour ces raisons ça actuellement. Nous avons dit que l'année dernière, il y a un pays qui a perdu, qui a perdu même moi. Et nous avons 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 perdu même moi. Euh, place richesse faut que c'est un lot bah nous perd combien d'informations à sur différents danser paroles l'histoire bah et comme ça plusieurs représentatifs de diverses organisations qui branchent dans affaires culture qui a participé dans activité ça là qui a pris coup à établissement CDF à Montbanard et c'est comme ça nous retrouvons pour nouvelle nous aujourd'hui messieurs mesdames mon cher monsieur autant pour garder mon cher bon invitation pour je ne puis moi encore si tu es comme ça fait la vie quand il y a plus de trois lots Nouvelle à Coyol. À présent, nous avons pour les chers. Merci en pile, Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair skies will become occasionally cloudy with a chance of some scattered showers. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the Eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low-level clouds drifting along this wind flow will bring a few scattered showers over the islands during the forecast period. Tides for Castries Harbour low at 3.34 p.m., high at 10.30 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay low at 5.01 p.m., high at 11.37 p.m. Seas moderate with waves of 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 6.02 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.